And uh, wherever you might be in New Zealand, I'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. I'm really glad you could join us because this afternoon we are here to celebrate something really special, quite unique. A program that for 15 years has been an institution in New Zealand television. Today we farewell spot on. And over the next hour you'll be meeting many of the presenters and seeing some of the highlights of 15 years unique Kiwi television. As well as that, we're announcing the winner of the listener spot on farewell contest. I wonder how you got on matching up the, the faces with the names. Well, you'll find out as the show goes on this afternoon. But first, have you ever wondered what it is that we put into Spot On to make it everyone's favourite? Well, there have been feats of strength and endurance, high drama, low drama, no drama at all. Man-eaters, brow-beaters, and of course, sheer stupidity. And a man who brought it all together back in 1973, somebody you possibly haven't heard of, his name is Murray Hutchinson, Spot On's original producer. Well, welcome back. Take a seat, Murray. It's been a while since you've uh, worked, I imagine, on the set, 15 years almost. What was the original philosophy behind Spot On? Well, when we set out, I didn't know exactly what the program was going to be. I knew what it wasn't going to be. We'd had some very nice uh, television programs for magazine programs for kids in uh, New Zealand before that, but they'd been a bit teachery, and I wanted something much more freewheeling uh, with the idea that when you're young, anything is possible. All right. Well, the presenters, of course, were a very important ingredient in the show that you were planning. What sort of people were you looking for there? I wanted young people with very individual personalities and uh, some a little bit zany, able to act, report, do all sorts of things. Right, the association with the audience was, was of paramount importance to you. In the spring of 73, you held auditions, and of all of those who applied, you only found one that fitted the bill. Now, do you remember this face? All the nervous type of person, you know, don't really like creatures and things, well, I suggest you switch off your TV set now. Working in the lab late one night When my eyes beheld an eerie sight For my monster from his slab began to rise And suddenly, to my surprise He did the mash He did the monster mash The monster mash It was a graveyard smash He did the mash It caught on oh, Here he is to join us, Ray Miller <laughs> Uh, 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 good to see you. How oh, wonderful. <laughs> well, the... Uh, so sad, but so happy. <laughs> <laughs> the hair has changed a little bit, granted. Well, I should hope so after all these years. <laughs> I'm just losing my grey beard now. Mm. Uh, what, what's going to replace the grey beard? Well, just more of the same, I suppose. It just gets longer. You did the audition way back when, Ray, and uh, then you got involved in the programme itself. Was it what you expected it would be? I didn't really have any expectations. I just knew that it was going to be a really great op opportunity. And, of course, Murray was the, uh, the factor that really turned things for me. Murray is just a brilliant and inspiring man and just wonderful to work with. And the name was quite unusual, spot on. Uh, where did that come from? Well, names are very important and we deliberated for weeks, didn't we, yeah, Murray? Yeah, we sat and around uh, throwing in names, everybody, and Ray came up with the name spot on, which was right. great. Well, you had the name. right when we you, heard it. You yeah. had the name, you had one presenter, but I think the next uh, presenter was actually right under your nose, wasn't she? That's right. We'd uh, I'd held auditions and uh, Ray was the person who came out of the auditions, and then somebody told me about the receptionist who worked in television at the time. Erin, our mother. <laughs> <laughs> and she proved to have hidden talents. Coming back from the pub one night Came across an unusual sight There was a chick with neat yellow teeth Dancing to a dustbin beat Come on, baby, let yourself go Come on, woman, let your kneecaps flow Come on, baby, move with me Dance the stars away Sauntered up to the sidewalk spot Slapped the bars off the jeweler's shop Sound we were making was sweet to hear Swinging crowd was drawing near Come on, baby Well, the receptionist was Erin Dunleavy <laughs> She can't be with us tonight because she's preparing Christmas dinner in Holland right about now But we do have this message 
Thank you, Bob. Hello, Murray and Ray. Merry Christmas to you both, and of course to everyone at home watching this final Spot On program. It seems incredible that it was 17 years ago since that day that I was at work on the telephone switchboard in the reception of D DN TV2, as it was called in those days, and in the door burst a man just home from a year's television work in Britain with a long, a man with a long ponytail full of curls, and he asked me if I would help him to make a new children's television program. That man, was, of course, was Murray Hutchinson, and that was the beginning of my adventure on Spot On, travelling the length and breadth of New Zealand, getting into the most incredible sorts of situations. But the thing I remember most about those early days was the atmosphere in which we worked. And that's the atmosphere that I try to capture in the work that I now do here in Holland. I'm still in television. I'm producing documentaries for an educational broadcasting company, not for children anymore, for adults. I'm not the only one, though, that left New Zealand to work in other parts of the world. Well, that's true, because when we tried to track down the third presenter, he turned out to be very elusive indeed. And our search took us across the Pacific to the big smoke. Well, thanks, Bob. Here I am in the Hollywood Hills, high above the city of Los Angeles. No, this is not smog. It's actually a cold winter's day. It all seems a long way from Dunedin, but that's where my journey began. It was as a reporter for the first spot on overseas trip that I came to Los Angeles and filming, and also filming in Hawaii and down into Mexico. It was one of those life-changing trips that uh, six months later I ended up moving here, uh, pursuing a career in acting, and over the years have done a wide variety of different kinds of roles, ranging from ancient Egyptians racing around the desert in chariots to Siberian explorers looking for frozen mammoths, um, American mountaineers scaling the heights of Mount McKinley, ancient Indians running around the desert covered in mud, and uh, even Pontius Pilate with a pet tiger. I would say that my uh, various sketches and songs I appeared in and spot on well prepared me for those kind of roles. Well, Murray, you'd found your three presenters, uh, so now you had to decide on the look for the show. And what did you go for? Well, it was black and white television, but we psychedelic was the, the thing at the time, so we made a black and white psychedelic <laughs> set. And it was all casual and bean bags and uh, something that could be moved and developed into anything we wanted it to be. It was something new, something special. It was 15 years ago. Brace yourselves, because we've actually found the first program. Let's take a look at that. <laughs> Hi. Around New Zealand are many lighthouses marking dangerous points of the coast to passing ships. Twenty-five of these lighthouses are manned by families who live close by. We decided this week to look at lighthouses. What better way to find out about them than to visit one? Eddie Norris and his family live at the Nugget Point Lighthouse at the mouth of the Clutha River. The headland was originally called Tokata Point, but early whalers called the small rocky islands off the point the Nuggets, and the name stuck. The Nugget Point was officially established as the name of the lighthouse when it began operating 104 years ago. Well, Douglas's uh, accent seems to have changed just a little bit. <laughs> 